Uh, thanks everyone for joining tonight. Uh, the people on uh, online, if you wouldn't mind muting yourselves, that would be great. We're, this is our first time doing a, a hybrid seminar, so big, big thanks to uh, Catherine for working out all the logistics of this here. <laughs> and, okay, sorry. <laughs> the team, excuse me. Um, yeah, she helped, definitely. But yeah, so thanks everyone. My name is Matt Nelson, and I'm a for president tonight, or at the moment, and we are going to tonight have our celebration where we're going to look through lots of uh, great pictures of fungi I've seen throughout the year, um, have some fun songs and things. Um, but first, I just want to give a big, big thanks to everyone on the board for all of their, their hard work this year. Um, there's a, a lot that goes in behind the scenes that I, I think most people, at least when I was on the other side of this, I didn't, I didn't realize uh, all goes into it. So I just really want to thank uh, everyone. Uh, Rinda Seuss, Susan Kaiser, Catherine Lambrick, Jeffrey O'Malley. Thank them also. But uh, I also just want to say thanks to everyone too, and to Stephanie for the newsletters. Um, and yeah, so with that, I think the first order of business we have tonight is I think Stephanie's going to take the lead here and we're going to have our annual election. So with that, pass it over to Stephanie Kowalik. Thank you very much, Matt. It is great to be back in a room with all of my Russian loving friends and with everyone on Zoom. Welcome everyone. Yay! <laughs> it is my privilege this evening uh, to have been asked to preside over the election of the Illinois Mycological Association's Executive Board for 2023. The Executive Board is an all-volunteer body and before progressing any further, I really want to acknowledge the hard work and efforts at the expense of some significant personal time, as Matt mentioned, of all of those who have served your club in the past year. Matt Nelson, President. Yeah. Sue's foray chair. Susan Kaiser, treasurer and membership. <laughs> Catherine Lambrecht, program chair. <laughs> and most of all, although it is not an elected position, it is a crucial role for our scientific organization. I'd like to especially recognize our scientific advisor, Dr. Patrick Leacock. So I'm pleased that this evening we have a full slate of candidates for the 2023 war. Let's get into official election uniform here. <laughs> <laughs> we do things officially here at the IMA for those of us, or those of you joining us the first time. Now, some of the current board members have agreed to continue for the next term in the same or a different capacity. There was a nominating committee that went around and reached out to some of our more active club members, and some folks have agreed to be nominated to some of the vacant positions. Right now, I'm going to announce the nominees. At the end, I'll ask for any additional nominations from the floor or from the Zoom chat. So if you are joining us on Zoom today, please make sure to add any nominations from the floor within the chat. If there's only one nominee for a position, the entire, well, there's only one nominee for a position who will vote by acclamation. And if there's only one nominee for each of the positions on the board, we'll vote for acclamation by acclamation for the entire slate of candidates. So right now, I will announce the nominees. For president, Matt Nelson. Program chair, Catherine Lambrecht. Secretary, Drew Hulbert. Treasurer, Lorinda Sues. And for surveys, Liz Weinstein. At this time, I'm going to repeat the roles and ask if there are any nominees from the floor. 
And Kathy, would you mind to monitor the chat and see if there are any nominations via chat sure. for any of the positions? Are there any nominees from the floor for the position of president? Nominees from the floor for the position of president. Kathy, from the chat? I don't see no. any. No, I said the All right. <laughs> For program chair, are there any nominees from the floor for program chair? Any nominees for program chair from the chat? None from the chat. Are there any nominees from the floor for the position of secretary? For the position of secretary, any nominees from the floor? From the chat, Linda? No nominees from the chat. Thank you. And for surveys, are there any nominees from the floor? For surveys, any nominees from the floor? From the chat? No, nope. none. Well, wonderful. Um, it looks like we can go ahead and vote by affirmation. At this time, for those of you joining us via Zoom, please go ahead and unmute yourselves. No, no, no. I can I got a I got a poll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it, it, it also has the additional question related to future meetings. So they will just answer the questions. That would just be terrific. All right. So please, I see the poll here on the screen. Please answer the questions on the poll. How long do folks have to answer the questions? We'll just wait until they stop responding. All right. <laughs> <laughs> tick, tick, tick. We hope. <laughs> But, oh wait, now is this not, oh, see, somebody finally responded. Great, thank you, whoever you are. <laughs> no, it doesn't, it takes less than a minute. But then they got their two cents in. Do you want to ask uh, to have a vote um, regarding this from the folks in the room as well? Um, we'll catch them later. Right. I just want to get this part just we'll get this part done. We'll finish the election. So that doesn't actually show up. So it's actually really neat to see your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Next time I'll I'll do better. See there's twenty there's thirty-five people linked or thirty-five devices linked in. Have we come to like a halt? Okay, let's quickly just take a quick picture so we have the information memorialized. Oh. You know what? Do a screen. Can you do a screen? Oh, oh you can. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, you know what? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for bearing with us on some of these little technical things. We are very proud as an organization to have to be able to do some hiring things to have uh, sure. folks joining us from the internet and then a whole bunch of people looks to okay, be about 25, 30 people here at the Niles Historical Society. Okay, so we'll end poll. Now pretty much everybody saw it, so it's not like, it's a, now Melinda gets to see it. Oh, so she see what the people at home see. Great. She got to see what was happening on my computer. Okay, so um, no, I do not approve the slate was zero. Okay. <laughs> there you go. In 19 out of 27, if we're going to have a Zoom lecture, they would rather just stay home. And then there's the watch party and choice number three, which I don't know. I guess I never put an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know the key answer, answer that folks here at on Zoom are waiting for, and that's to find out if uh, we're going to be electing the slate of candidates as proposed for the 2023 board. So now can we ask the folks at home to unmute so we can do a big acclamation? Oh, you want that? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, all right, everybody, you part. know how to unmute, but then mute yourself later. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. So um, I'm going to ask the members who are here present and those who are on Zoom to vote aye or nay. Uh, for the slate of candidates as was presented. Matt Nelson for president, Catherine Lambrecht, program chair, Drew Hulbert, secretary, Lorinda Sue's treasurer, and Liz Weinstein for surveys. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any oh, we actually heard the people at home. <laughs> Say it again, guys. <laughs> Let's hear everybody's clap now. Aye. It's working. It's working beautifully. Thank you, Kathy. 
And so maybe I can ask uh, those of the 2023 board who'd like to come up and just say hello here in front of the podium and be oh. recognized. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> <you're not. laughs> uh, just come on up, right. Matt. We're right. happy to have you. All right. So, our new president, our new attorney <laughs> president. <laughs> He had this magnificent vest. He was a photographer too. So he always had a uh, you know, camera around his neck and a vest filled with patches of all sorts of mushroom things or things related to the Czech language or Czechoslovakia. Yes. Back in the day. He was, yes. He was all about Czechoslovakia. In fact, talking about Czechoslovakia, he actually left Czechoslovakia when it was in the Iron Curtain era under the guise of hunting for mushrooms. Oh, he just sort of creeped across the border <laughs> and went <laughs> out. But no less is uh, a more recent member. Fancy Walker was a member of the club for about 10 years. At least. Yeah, something like that, 10 years. And uh, many of you uh, probably remember her, especially during the time of the Botanic Garden Show. She was all over it, bringing in a lot of specimens from her place up in Wisconsin and um, always participating a lot um, in that event. And we did sadly lose her way too young in November of this past year. So, and she was a regular at this program when we did. She was. She always brought pictures from her travels around and just some really interesting mushrooms. And then on a, like the mycological global is Tom Volk. Have a diary. Yeah, maybe we can have someone um, else from um, the board to speak about Tom Volker just a minute or so. Uh, Patrick, do you wish to say something? I'm talking to the man at home. <coughs> can you hear us? Yeah. 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 Do you want to say something? Um, I don't have anything special oh, I, to say. I feel like that. It's just to, just to acknowledge that. Yeah, it's a shock to all of us. Um, we were talking about missing Tom at the National Foray down in Missouri in uh, October, and I'm um, hoping he was doing okay. I hadn't heard um, the updates this fall, but um, he's going to be missed by many, many people. Um, he's had a lot of wonderful students that have 
um, gone through his classes and programs there in, in Wisconsin. So he'll be missed. The first ever Mushroom Club meeting that I ever attended was not in Illinois, it was out in California. Tom Bolt was the guest speaker. And I had gone to this Mushroom Club meeting, frankly, just to humor my mom, who's on the call right now, my mom. Um, <laughs> And she was visiting me, saw there was a mushroom club meeting, and I said, okay, and I know you're doing this mushroom thing in Illinois, like, fine, let's, let's go. And we did, and Tom Volk presented, and it just blew me away. His enthusiasm for mushroom, sharing the science behind it, the love and the fascination, I was pretty much hooked from that one meeting. So thank you, Tom Volk. Because of Tom Volk, I am here today in front of you guys. And your mother. <laughs> my mom, yeah, my mom's the best. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Those of you who have gone to this uh, shower rush, it's called the Botanic Gardens, and have seen the, the printouts, eight and a half by 11, about each mushroom that was scattered around. That's from a presentation that Tom Ball put together. Yeah, and he generously shared that with the club so that we could use it during the Botanic Garden show. And even our speakers went on the, um, on the home last month, mm -hmm. he was talking a lot about Tom Volk. Yeah. So he's on a lot of people's minds. For those of you who don't know Tom Volk, Google Tom Volk, V O L K, and you'll see everything that comes up and all of the wonderful resources online to help you learn more about mycology. Truly, his legacy. Truly, truly, truly. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. So just want to let you know um, there will be a meeting. In, our, in January, it's for my food history, but whatever I have, I do programs for three different groups. So whenever there's an opportunity to share, I do, because it's a little less wear and tear on me. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a woman who wrote a book that came out during the pandemic on cooking with truffles. I've only had a few truffles in my life, and one came from Oregon. To my mind, it smelled like diesel fuel. <laughs> so I never ate it, and, I, and then it got moldy, and then I could throw it away. <laughs> I know, that was bad. I'm going to probably learn when she talks next month that I made a big mistake. But at the time, it didn't feel like it. So that will be a uh, day. Um, it's, it's in the email. And there's going to be another program, Knock on Wood, uh, with Ileana Reagan the chef from Elizabeth, but she's no longer owns Elizabeth, and she's got her own thing going up. And she has a book that's written. And we have this negotiation going back and forth. Either we're going to do it live, and if it is, we'll be on a Saturday morning at a place where I normally do programs in Chicago, or it will be virtual, and then it will probably be on a Monday night, and the, but it will be the shared audience. So you don't know, I don't know yet, Details. This could all fall apart, but we'll find out. We'll find out. So anyway, tonight is our annual holiday party sharing of images, and I thought we would start with the poor guy that we experimented with early on, Robert Song. Do you want to try sharing your screen? I will make it all work. I'm hey, um, let me also. Uh, we're getting a weird feedback thing, so let me turn down the volume. And see if that works. Yes, that does. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, as best as okay. we can for our setup. Let me yes. share my screen here. Give me a moment. Um, yeah. Uh, can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, great. My name is Robert Song, and I work for the Field Museum. Did that work? No? Are you, am I still sharing the screen? Yeah. No, you're fine. We just need those of us in the uh, Niles Museum have to turn down the lights to see your stuff better. Oh, okay, okay. It popped back to the Zoom screen, so I'm still trying to figure all this out. So, uh, my name is Robert Song. I work at the Field Museum right now. I, I switched from being a, a, um, in lichens and botany, and now I am a, an administrative coordinator in the collections department. Uh, soon to possibly join another division there in the museum. But anyways, what I'd like to kind of sh share is a few or a few slides today. Um, switch to Southern Illinois. We don't really think of, we, we all know about Shawnee National Forest, how, how great it is, Garden of the Gods, but there are a lot of, uh, a lot of lichen uh, species growing down there. And I went down there to, in April to 
uh, take care of my grandmother's uh, urn and, and uh, uh, just kind of drive around. My family is from Southern Illinois. So let me see if I can page this. There we go. Okay, Shawnee National Forest. Uh, most people know where this is. It's in what they call southernmost Illinois. Uh, it is not, it, it kind of ranks lowly on, on national forest, but it's actually for Illinois. It's one of our pride, most pride. And starting over, well, we don't need to really start over. Let's just move on. Uh, map of Shawnee National Forest. Uh, Trig Tower is a place that I've, I've always dreamed of going to. Um, it's in it's it's in part of uh, Shawnee National Forest. It's one of the last uh, fire observation towers that people can actually go up into. Uh, I started to climb up those stairs, and uh, it's very rickety. I don't know why they haven't shut it down, but it's very spindly. It's uh, when I started to walk up those that ladder. It started to shake, and apparently people just go up to it. They love doing it, but I chickened out and didn't go up it. Instead, I found a nice lichen specimen. They've been doing some controlled burns in the forest there, and uh, there was a whole patch of forest that was, uh, that it looks like maybe a year or two ago, they did a controlled burn, and there was, there was some nice, uh, looks like we had some nice Parmatrema uh, caparata there. Uh, maybe. If I, I'm sorry, Flavo Parmelia. Let me scroll down. So we, so I was kind of driving along, and I found this overlook, and I just, it really looked, the vista was really nice. Ludine's Lookout, it was actually, it's it's on a geolocation reference map. Uh, somebody actually did like one of those geolocation things where they, uh, people try to go and find places. So when I looked this up, that's what popped up first. It turns out I'm actually distantly related to Ludine. Uh, like I said, all my family on my mom's side is from Southern Illinois. Uh, this was my first cousin once removed of my second cousin first removed. Uh, Ludine passed away about three years ago. And so this was a place obviously Ludine really enjoyed going to. And what did I find when we parked the car and we started walking around? Lichens, lots of them. And I used iNaturalist and it came up with a, it came up with Xantha Parmelia and Flavo Parmelia. Uh, but it's just, it was really interesting. There's a lot, there's a lot of growth all over these rocks. Um, I have never seen so much lichen in all my life. Um, it just was, it was just amazing. It covered, and these are really big rocks, these, these outgrowths. Um, so, I was kind of interested in this photo because this actually is, we can determine about two or three different species of lichens, actually uh, genera of lichen. Um, there's Xanthoparmelia, uh, Flavoparmelia, and I wasn't quite sure um, because I, obviously you're in Shawnee National Forest, you, you are not allowed to take anything. Um, I think this, I don't know if this was actually private property, this little lookout, but um, it was a nice area. I, there's no reason to collect anything. We've got pl plenty of it back at the museum. But I did take this photo to do some IDing later. And uh, what I did was I did a, I went to um, to Lichen Portal, and we use Lichen Portal for a lot for uh, because it's an aggregator site. And so I I searched for uh, Xanthoparmelia and Flavoparmelia uh, to see what if it was around Simpson, Illinois. And I came up with these, uh, that there were a lot of different sites, a lot of different collection sites uh, before. A guy named Gerald Wilhelm uh, did a lot of collecting for uh, New York Botanic Garden and also a lot of specimens that are at uh, Morton Arboretum. And so uh, I showed this to a couple of people at the museum and they, uh, Torsten Lumsch said right away, this is Anthoparmelia cumberlandia, um, Flavoparmelia Bart uh, baltimoreensis. Uh, but without, the problem is uh, both of these are, primarily ACA is a family that's really kind of difficult to ID without doing some pretty involved chemistry. You have to do T, uh, TLC uh, plates. Um, so, you, so you have to do some, you have to really do some chemistry and the keys on it are pretty significant. So once you once you do this kind of chemistry, then you've got another. And so anyway, uh, that's kind of, let me do, that's, 
kind of the presentation. I took a few extra little shots here, but this bench was really nice. Um, everything was carved on it from, it almost looked like one, one like they got it from the, from one log or something, but um, it was really, it's a, just a nice area. That panoramic doesn't do it justice. This was in April of, two th of this year, so it was kind of nice. We didn't have all the leaves blocking the view. That's about a 20, probably close to maybe a 30 mile uh, vista in distance. You've got Johnson Woods, I'm sorry, Johnson Hill off in the distance to the right. Uh, and I want to say that is the Ohio, but I don't think it's the Ohio you know, off in the distance. So let me turn back up my, my speaker and see if anybody has any questions. Questions, so. Right. We're just so, one, we're overwhelmed and one happy. Thank you for participating. Um, Liz Weinstein, I know you're here. I am here. Shall we try to do your, I will, you're the new survey chair. That's what they say, yeah. <laughs> I hope you agree. I do agree. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's okay. I agree, yeah. I once was survey chair. It was the worst for me. It was the, not the right job for me. Okay. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> it's not that I'm a bad, I could do many other things. That was not it. We have a librarian here tonight. That's like a hero. A superhero. I'm a librarian too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a librarian too. Oh, All right. Know. Let's take over. Three superheroes in the room. Excellent. One of us will figure it out. <laughs> yeah. um, so these are, I don't have any like grand presentation. These are just a collection of some photos from this year. Um, I'm hoping Patrick and some other folks will give me some feedback because I don't have IDs on all of these. Um, not all of these are found in Illinois. This first uh, handful was found at the Northwoods Foray in Cable. Um, I was up there and I did a, um, I know at least a handful of you up there, I did a um, workshop on mushroom photography and letter foray. And these are some of the goodies we found up there. Um, this first photo is of, you're gonna, my Latin pronunciation is not awesome, which I'm going to have to work oh, on. We, we had a lecture about this about a year and a half ago, and the woman said, it doesn't matter if you mispronounce it as long as you understand each other. Okay, there you go. All right. I don't think you're going to understand me. <laughs> but um, this first one's uh, Clavian, Clavulinopsis. I'm not sure of the species, Patrick. <laughs> Um, I think it's either Helvolia or Fulciformis. Um, but these were awesome. They, these Each spindle is like at least six inches tall. I've never seen them that tall. So it's kind of wild. Um, and that was like in a little boggy area with a bunch of hemlock. Um, and in the next slide, these are, yeah, another mystery Mycena, I believe they are found nearby. I've, been, I've looked on iNaturalist and all my guides. I can't find anything like this that grows in clusters. So again, hit me up if you have an idea. Um, there are super beautiful little translucent lemony yellow things. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I did put them in a specimen table, so who knows if I made them back. Um, next slide, again, um, some Mycena I believe that I found I don't think they are the same. Um, these are found in two different areas. The reason is if you look at the stem on the second one, it's actually sort of flat and there's a um, like a rivet going all the way up. And on the first one, with the naked eye, it looked pitch black. But when I actually looked at it on the screen, it kind of pulled out this brown. So again, let me know. But I fell in love with these because they're what I call goth mushrooms. <laughs> and I just like love goth mushrooms. Did he say he knows? No, just my finger. Okay. Okay, so the next one, this was an exciting one to find, a new one from me, uh, along with the other ones, Neofavilus suavis simus. So this grows on like dead sticks and they smell like anise, or if you know Tavis Lynch, he's convinced they smell like pistachio ice cream. <laughs> and the mycelium throughout the stick makes the entire dang thing just smell like anise, or if you're Tavis, pistachio ice cream, but it's wild how <laughs> fragrant they are. And we found, I think, like two specimens the whole time. Um, if you, the top of them just kind of look like, uh, what is the spring polypore, neo? Yeah, but on the bottom, they're gilled 
So they kind of fake you out. Whenever you're in the north woods of Wisconsin and you see, think you see just a boring polypore, flip it over, smell it, see if it's got ridge gills like that or um, if you're dealing with something else. But that was an exciting kind of rare one, or at least one that might not be rare, but like very overlooked. Um, the next one, this one, okay, it was having a hard night the night before. <laughs> not in its prime, but a pretty rare one to find um, from what I understand. Uh, it's Basepora myriad phyla. Yeah. So, um, Britt Bunyard, some folks on iNaturalist, and again, Tavis helped me ID this, and there's only been like a two or three found up in that area. Again, really boggy area, but these are beautiful. The tops are this rich mustardy yellow, and the bottom's really lilac violet. Um, in its younger year, it would have been more obvious. Um, and the next one... This one's not so rare, but it was really fun to find the lobster mushroom or a Hypomyces lactiforum. Um, there are tons of them up there. And it was the first time I actually found some that like were edible. Usually they're just like, the bugs are like, I'm busy, get out of here. So <laughs> that was nice. Um, the next one, this was a new one for me and really cool. The photos don't quite capture how cool they look. This is a crew gomphus. I also just like the name. Um, the caps actually look sort of metallic. It looks like, eh, what's the big deal? But if you have one in your hand, you can see it's just wild looking and sort of shiny. Um, and there are a couple different species that grow around here and they're really hard to tell apart because the caps vary from like burgundy to, that's another thing. The caps vary from burgundy to olive and in person you, you're like, is that green or red? Like, it's really hard. You know how mushrooms do that thing where you're like, I can't tell if it's green or red. <laughs> Unless it's a mushroom, yeah. Um, the next one, oops, one back. This one was found near Glenview or in Glenview in August. This is Ammonita sesliae um, in the Racopus. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, group. And... Patrick helped me ID that. I didn't know what it was. I thought it, I, I saw it and thought like pantherina-esque something, but I was wrong. Um, the next one, Helvella crispa. Um, not super rare, but I was like, wow, you are a good looking specimen. Um, this one I actually found along the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin. And there was just a little group of them scattered like Smurfs there, um, but kind of like, I like your, the way you describe these things. Oh, yeah? <laughs> very natural. Oh, well, I'm nervous, so I'm glad I'm, I'm totally relaxed up here. So, yeah, I just thought this specimen was, like, amazing because it has that true saddle shape that you kind of picture, like, an elf riding on, you know? <laughs> so, as they do. Um, the next one is... Okay, so this one was so wild to find. It's this type of Seriopora. Patrick Leacock ID'd it for me. I believe the species is Tarda. So again, Ice Age Trail, everything's like dense and green, and I'm walking, 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 and I see this like big gobby pink tongue, just total <laughs> contrast from all the green. And um, yeah, I, I call it, the common name for this is the purple people eater, if it was up to me. <laughs> Because it was big and it just kind of has this like dragon tongue thing going on. Um, and I, that is, I'm, what, it, what do you guys say? Foot and a half? 18 inches? Yeah. Um, that was really interesting. I went back a couple weeks later looking for, I wanted to go back to get a specimen for Patrick and they'd clear cut a lot. And I think they took that tree out. I couldn't find it. So, ugh. Anyhow, that was one of my most fun finds from this summer. The next one, what do we have? The next slide. There. We go. There. Um, <clears throat> Xylaria flabiliformis. Um, these are tiny, and they're totally overlooked all the time. Time, and they don't look exciting here. But when you find them, they just remind me of Billy Idol. Like, they look like little punk rockers out there with, like, you know, I mean, the hair. You see it, right? Yeah. Um, I've only found these, like, three times, but then again, they're really easy to look overlook because it's, like, 
I don't even think like half an inch big. Um, the next one we've got is the, an ammonite of pseudo -cro pseudo Croatia. I, I can hear like Patrick saying it, but not, you know. Um, <laughs> so this one was found in Glenview with that other ammonita. If you want ammonitas around here, just check out the Glenview area, August. Um, and those actually went to Patrick for his collection at the Field Museum or where, whatever he's going to do with it. Uh, let's see. Next one. I just love these and they're overlooked all the time. They're teeny tiny, just growing right on the ground. Humeria hemispheria, also known as a brown haired white cup. I mean, they're cute as heck. How tiny is that? Because that's, that's a close up, right? This is like. What, what, like the size of the centimeter, aircraft? smaller than a centimeter. Okay. So, I mean, maybe they get to be up to a centimeter. I'm sure somebody over there is saying it out loud and we're not hearing it. But yeah, they're like, you know, a frog spittoon or something. I just love them. Um, they're just sweet. Just keep your eyes, your, I call them your mushroom goggles on because you just <laughs> walk over stuff all the time and it's just sitting right there waiting for you to see it. The next one. Um, these are just the various Rusula species. I'm not awesome with Rusula, nor would I pretend to be because some of them are just like so hard to ID without, you know, a microscope or sequencing. But this one on the right was like super bubblegum pink, which I'd never seen before. And um, that was just kind of cool to find. And only a couple more left. This last one, or the second from last one is Lact Lactiflus corrigus or the corrugated cat milky. Um, the top's really velvety on those. And then as you see, it's a milky cap. So when you injure the flesh, it it bleeds its oat milk or whatever is in there. And then the last one I have is a Cortinarius Atkinsonianus. I've never been able to pronounce that one and I never will, but um, these are awesome. They just look like little brown brownish buns, but when you cut them open, there's like, this vivid, as you can see, yellow, purple contrast. Um, I always find them in this really young state. I've never found them kind of fully in bloom, if you will. But those are always fun to find and, and a rarity. So yeah, that's what I got for this year. So this is this is Mark Flickman. Hey. Right. Um, hi, this, forgive me, this is my first time doing anything like this. So. That's okay. Um, I've, I've enjoyed eating mushrooms my whole life, but in about four years ago, in about 2018, um, I lived in Rhode Island, and for a couple of years, this one, I, I guess it was a mushroom, was popping up in my yard every fall, and it was really unique. And so one day, uh, one Sunday, I had nothing better to do. And I went on Facebook and I saw there was a Rhode Island Mushroom Society or something. <laughs> so I posted a picture of it. And I said, does anybody know what this is? Give me a call or whatever. And I put my phone number. And about less than an hour later, my phone rang. And a guy, uh, Ryan Bouchard, who is a uh, Rhode Island mushroom expert, uh, said to me, where do you live? <laughs> And I told him, and he said, can I come over? <laughs> and I said, sure. So he came by and uh, proceeded to tell me it was like the best one he had seen of that species. And um, I asked him if it was edible. And he said, yes, it is. And I said, would you like to cook it? So him and his partner cut it up, came in my house. We cooked it, and it started my relationship with Ryan and mushrooms. <laughs> and um, then I uh, left my job. So I had more time to do my landscaping. And our house in Rhode Island was at the end of a cul-de-sac with some woods surrounding it. And so once I started to cut my own lawn, I started to discover all these mushrooms in my backyard that I had never seen before. And I'd be calling Ryan all the time. Okay, Ryan, here's another picture. What's this one? Is it edible? And I would find ones that he would tell me he would to make in tea or um, hallucinogenic ones or um, 
uh, what were those other ones we found? Yeah, well, we'll just show you the pictures. So, so these are from the past four years. I've not shown them to anyone by family. I just took them, as you can see, from my iPhone. And um, I don't know the names of a lot of them. Uh, it's just more of a visual treat for you guys. If you know them, feel free to tell me. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so th these, these were some morels I found in the backyard. Uh, this was a, a tree growing in the, in the woods by my house. I don't know what these were, but they were all up along the, the trunk of the tree. A living tree? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess these are chicken of the woods from what I've been told. Um, I don't know what that is. Usually I would just take pictures of ones that looked cool. It wasn't like, oh, I know this one is a rare one. It could have been, but I just took things that were pleasing to me. This was uh, right in Northbrook. I was, uh, I was in front of my parents' house just a couple months ago and I looked down and I saw this. They were all over their front yard. Somebody, I didn't put those seashells on there. Somebody Snail else did. Shells. Snail shells. <laughs> and, uh, but it kind of gives you an idea of the size of it. Um, these were um, in, a, in a woods in Illinois right, right near here. Uh, this fall, we found them. I don't know what those are. Yeah, <laughs> They were just slimy. It wasn't that they were like, wasn't like from after a rain. It was just the way they were. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I'd say probably maybe about half of them were from my backyard in Rhode Island. It was very healthy. The, the, the mushroom expert was so sad when I moved. That was your backyard also? This was not my backyard. But there were some of those in my backyard. Um, but I'll show you, that we'll get to the one that, uh, this is one of the. I like how this one grew around the grass. Yeah. Yeah, it's growing edges very tensely. You can see the size of these. This was right here in, in, uh, in one of the trails in Illinois, uh, in Lake Forest. <laughs> and you know, since since I met Ryan in Rhode Island, it was great because I just started noticing the mushrooms. Like they're all over, but I never saw them before. And then I'd start looking, and then I. I'd see them. I'd be driving and all of a sudden on the side of the road, I'd be like, whoa! And I'd pull the car over and take some pictures of some mushrooms. Uh, yeah, but mushroom hunting by car is kind of dangerous. <laughs> it is, it is. We did a lot of mushroom hunting by the car in the fall. We found a ton. I know, but it's just where you stand on the road. You're not ready to drive. The car behind you is no understanding. Exactly. So one time, I, I had my nieces with me, and they were tiny kids at the time. I pretended to yell 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we were totally theater. The girls were completely unaware. This is Morton Got me. The biggest thing I would always be like is, is it edible or is it not edible? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, my gosh. That was at the Morton Arboretum. That's a pretty good style. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a puffball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It accidentally fell into my car. Oh. <laughs> what did you do? Huh? <laughs> I uh, sliced it and cooked it. Yeah. I think those are I think those are little puffs or whatever. When you push them, the dust comes out of them. Yeah. We, we did show and tell a few months ago, and there was this kid that was like six years old. He said, look, you can see the spores, you can see the I'm like, yeah, that was funny. Yeah? Well, that looks like it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> did the plumber come today? <laughs> that's, that's why I took, we called that the butt mushroom. I don't know, I don't know what it is. But. <laughs> So that's the mushroom that was growing in my yard every year. And there's the, that's Ryan. It kept growing back. It kept growing back every year. And after about three years, I said, I got to find out what this is. And it was about this big. And it looked beautiful. So now these. These were in a yard about a block or two from my house and Ryan, who was now my expert, I called him one day and I said, ooh, there's something really cool. And he came over and he told me that they glow in the dark. So we cut them and he said, go in, in a dark place like your garage at night and just sit there for a while and look at the underside and you'll see it, it'll glow. And sure enough, it did. That's the same. about an acre. Yeah. Does anybody know what those are? No, there's no, this. they're not puffs. They're little. Not those. They had stems. Okay. Is this also from your magical backyard? Yeah. Is that the backyard? No. I think so. That's, I think that's, 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 that's the woods near the house. No. That's, 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 that's the backyard again. There's some more of those. I think this is one of the mushrooms that he told me was good in tea um, for um, like if you have stomach problems or um, things of that sort. And I think I tried one and you boil it in water and mix, you make tea out of it and it's supposed to help. There's a puff. Thank you. 
just to give a little perspective. And I guess it helped that our backyard was very, after a rain, it would be. This was right here in, um, what's the name of that place where we got the walking sticks? This is right in Lake County. Ryers? No. It's right, it's not far from here. We came across this about a month ago. Two months ago? Yeah. yeah. Of course, when we went back a few days later, it was, it was done. Yeah. <laughs> done, like, at the time, you know, diet, you know, on its own, or did somebody could buy it harm? No, it's all withered. It, yeah. It's all withered. Um, but I, I cut off a little bit, and we, we cooked it. It was good. Mm. Yep. That's when it wilted. Yeah. Wow. What a, what a Just a couple of weeks later. And you can see it's all on the ground there. Lorna was really good behind your computer. Because this one, it restarted, it restarted, and it was like just a blank screen. So I have to go figure out this. I'm going to have to Sorry if I'm going fast. There's a lot of fish. <laughs> That's just a shed. Oh. It's like a little oh, off the ground. No, but it's cute. <laughs> You're very fortunate. Yeah. Well, about half of them are from here, but I just started noticing mushrooms more. And, um. <laughs> These were huge. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that mushroom looks like a dog. It, does. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Is this your driveway, Art? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say you learned you mushroom, but you're just the right time in life. So you tend to really appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know the names of all these, but I. Oh, don't look at us how we can get it. Yeah, you're right. Patrick says, oh, These look like pancakes when I saw them. So there's, there's the, um, the calendar when Ryan saw my mushroom. There's the picture he put in the calendar um, and a little write up with my name. So after that, I was like, well, I guess I better start looking for mushrooms, you know. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I'm sure within the short time that you've been doing this, yeah. you've learned a lot. Well, sure. You're now more expert than most people about mushrooms. Well. I mean, that's what I tell everybody that goes to the Tana Garden. It's like, you still know more than most people. Yeah. Even if you think you don't know as much as some other people. I wish I was a little more knowledgeable on the edible, like, I know Chicken of the Woods, and I know that brain one that I had in my backyard, and I know puffballs, 
But beyond that, I'd be scared to eat anything, but I would love to try stuff. These were really cool. These were tiny, these were about this size. And I just happened to be walking in the woods by my house in Rhode Island. And there they were, and I took a picture of it because I thought it was kind of cool looking. And then I looked up in a mushroom book and I said, oh, these are mushrooms. <laughs> I had no idea, it looked like little seeds in some kind of pods. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, this one? Yeah. yeah. That is real. I had a koi pond in my backyard too. So all year we'd have frogs and uh, snakes and turtles. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. We saw we saw a lot of mushrooms. We saw a lot of mushrooms this year in the Potawatomi woods off of uh, off of uh, Dundee. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, a lot of them there. Yeah. That's the pond. That's yes. part of the pond, yeah. There's some those are not real mushrooms <laughs> on the bottom. Just don't tell them that. Is that the same shed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More of those in the backyard. Yeah, pretty good backyard. Yeah. Almost done. Um, well, we, we, we have so many delays tonight. We, we will wait patiently. <laughs> <laughs> In court for scale. That's my <laughs> I used to be a master gardener volunteer. And there was a lady who had seed cores and she wanted to get rid of them. And I'm like, wow, but it's so cool. I, I don't like the look of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That's it. All right, this is Catherine Lambrecht. I'm narrating Hunter LeDuc's slides for the holiday party 2022. 
and doing my very best with the Latin pronunciations. The first slide is a Dicryopinax spatularia. It's a fan-shaped jelly fungus. It's considered edible. And Hunter found it while fishing in Bureau County on the Illinois River. This is Spatularia cis volutipes. Stephen Russell says only two species have been sequenced worldwide. He leans toward Rufa over Flavida. Hunter leads toward a third option provided by Michael Quo, Spatulariopsis volutipes. Dicryopinex elegans, another Dicryopinex species, jelly fungus. Hunter found this in August in Ogle County. Albertrellus cariolocorus. According to Wikipedia, one of the 12 species of Albertrellus mycorrhizal with eastern hemlock. Hunter found this in August at the Kemp Research Station, University of Wisconsin. Gloliophyllum separium, commonly known as conifer maize gill or rusty brown polypore. It was found this summer in north central Wisconsin. Agaragus. According to Mikhail Crystalla Selk, a Dr. Susian hop on pop, baby agaricus hitching a ride on agaricus. Possibly a trodia group, Irpex lacteus, recipidate polypore. Romaria ariospora or at least that's what Hunter would like to think. This was taken this summer, 2022. Boliota group, Hyphaloma lactariatium. These edible brick caps were found in South Tennessee last December 5th, 2021. Astraeus hygrometricus, the false or barometer earth star, is named for its ability to open when humid and close when dry. Hunter found this over the summer near Deerfield, Wisconsin. Multiclavula, Multiclavula musita. Ascocoroini sarcodes, an open hunter assumes, close to home, November 2022. Peltigaria lichen, Peltigara lichen. I'm sure Matt would now interject the correct information if he could. Token microscopy photo, a handful of the first attempts at looking at spores under a microscope. Can you help me ID these, please? This is where if we were film if we were filming this live, people would be offering suggestions. Sorry about that. Felinus group. ID depends on tree host. Armillaria or Ozonium of Coprinellus. And these are some of Hunter's husband Tim's interesting picks and finds.
Cyzygospora mysotophila, parasite on gymnopsis. Oh, gosh. The colibila jelly attacks gynephilus dryphilus. Chlora cyborea oreogenesis. Typically, these events close with the first morel words written by Hunter Deluc and the music played by Hunter Deluc. But this year, we suggest you go to YouTube and it's named, this particular video is named the first Morel sing-along standard. You can easily search it on YouTube, either using Hunter Leduc or at Can You See Me 88, which is the official name of her channel. But Hunter Leduc will get you there as well. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you, Hunter, for your efforts. Thank you and happy holidays. Okay. Um, all right. So my name is Lauren DeSeuss. For those of you at home, um, we're re-recording this because we had a little technical difficulty. Uh, I'm going to give a quick uh, slideshow of our forays this year. This first picture is from Kank Key, our morel hunt that was not terribly successful, but was a very good time. Um, this is a table shot from Kank Key. As you can see, we had some uh, Brunia and some other spring things. Um, this is from White Pine State Park out near Oregon, Illinois which was also a lovely, lovely park. Lots and lots of spring flowers. Again, no morels, but we had a great time. This is our uh, club member, Tim, uh, Tim's building, which he graciously hosted us and let us use it because they did pick up and get kind of windy. So it was great to be inside. Thank you, Tim, for the wonderful accommodations. Um, trying to remember where this was, and I can't off the top of my head right this moment. I think this was one of our state parks on the south side of Chicago, though. Um, this wonderful state park, you can see we have some kind of soggy looking club members. I uh, took us on a loop and got us trapped in the rain. Everyone was very gracious about it, very kind, but we had a good time despite getting soaked. Uh, this is Silver Spring State Park, which is lovely and worth the trip. It's out southwest of Aurora. Uh, we found a bunch of really lovely things out there. And also, it's just a really great um, state park. Lots of interesting plants and trees, and they even have pawpaws there, which were uh, not blooming at the time we were there, but when we went back later in the summer, they actually had some fruit on them, which was pretty exciting. Uh, this is out at Fermi Lab, which we've been going to for years. They're wonderful out there. Um, that's a really nice uh, oak dominated area. Um, a lot of chanterelles and such out there. Um, I think this, yeah, this is still a Fermi Lab. I recognize the tables. This is our favorite mycologist, Patrick Leacock, looking absolutely prepared for a foray out at Silver Springs. Again, at Silver Springs. Yeah, lots and lots of people came to the forays this year. They were, uh, we averaged about 30 people per foray and it was a lot of fun organizing and spending time with all of you. And uh, this is our first one in Cook County, which wasn't until July sometime. We we did have some hiccups getting things sorted out. 
Um, this is Schiller Woods on Irving by the Displains River, one of my favorite places. They recently, in the last couple of years, stopped mowing the whole grass area there. So it's really interesting watching it evolve as it's changing a bit. This is still Schiller Woods. Schiller Woods is always a very productive foray. Even in dry times, in the winter, you will find things there. It's a really active area. Uh, this is our Botanic Garden show foray, so this survey. Uh, this is out at Potawatomi Woods. Uh, that's me standing up on the little shelf thing there because I'm too short to be seen by a whole group. Um, Again, that was a really great turnout. We found lots and lots of wonderful things. The show was lovely this year. You can see we have a wide variety collected. Uh, we have some boxes that our president, Matt, borrowed from the Botanic Garden, or not Botanic, Field Museum for our display. I think they were really lovely. And our new foray leader, Liz, is pictured. Yeah, there's myself and Melody and Tim and uh, Jeffrey. This is our longtime club member Susan and I when we went down to the NAMA foray in Missouri this year, which was, again, if you haven't been to a NAMA foray, you should look into doing that sometime, the national group, well, North American group. Uh, this is one of the forays out there in Missouri, which was a great time. It was very dry. We didn't find a whole lot. You can see a lot of us are holding crusts because there, there wasn't a lot of uh, large fruit bodies. But uh, this is uh, our Patrick with our one of our former club presidents, uh, Matt, not Matt, uh, Andy Wilson, who's out in Colorado these days at the uh, Denver Botanic Garden. And this is one of our last forays. This was, I believe, Allison Woods, which again, super productive, lots and lots of really cool things. Uh, this is, we went and had a table at Beer on the Woods, which is a fundraiser for Friends of the Forest Preserve for Cook County. So that is uh, President Matt, uh, longtime member Pamela and myself. This is uh, how you frequently find Matt on forays. He's always looking at the lichens, and lichens really like parking lots. And this was the last foray of the year. This is St. Mihail Woods out on the south side, one of my favorite woods. Find a lot of interesting things there. It's the first place I found Helvellas, which if you haven't seen Helvellas, they're really cool. Um, unfortunately, they don't have picnic tables anymore, so we had to use the parking lot for our talk, table talk at the end, but it was still a good time. So thank you for looking at the foray photos and thank you for a very successful foray year. Okay, I think that wraps it up for me. Yeah, this is our first hybrid meeting. We knew it was going to be fun. We just didn't know how much. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, now we can go back to normal.